everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Richard Lewis Show. Uh, we're back into the swing of things in 2022, and joining me on this episode is uh, a long-standing colleague of mine, one of the new school of esports journalists that's been doing great work out there. So yes, it's an esports journalism episode. It's all right, you can fuck off and come back next time, you boring bastards. Maybe you'll learn something if you stick around. It is uh, Adam Fitch. Um, who I uh, obviously I say is a colleague. I mean, he's going to be leaving Desert or very soon, where he worked as the business lead. So I should say that, but obviously does have uh, new projects lined up. It's great to have you here, brother. Lot, as I said uh, before, we went live. Long overdue. Uh, to get, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, I appreciate. It. I mean, I, I watch a lot of the episodes, so like seeing you have like Machine and Henry Jean stuff, and then me, I feel very out of place. But uh, I'll do my best to flame the industry enough to earn my spot here. Well, I mean, look, let's let's get into that because um, uh, unbeknownst to you, one of the reasons why I think I immediately oh, uh, gravitated uh, towards you is uh, I had a friend um, uh, called Boone, right? <laughs> Just calling him Boone. And uh, we were good mates at university. We've since sort of drifted apart. And uh, you look like him and you All sound right. like him because he's from the same place in Britain that okay. you're from. Um, so... You seem to me to be a pretty down to earth regular guy yes. and uh, very much like Boone was. And uh, it's sort of crazy to think about people like you and me now kind of being like these, you know, voices of the industry. Cause I don't <laughs> think we're what you immediately think of when you think of esports. So I want to ask, obviously, how the fuck you got into it because you mm. seem like a very unlikely candidate to be here. Oh, well, I appreciate it. I'll take that as a compliment, number one. It sort of uh, is these days, yeah. <laughs> it feels like it. Well, I mean, my like my story is really boring, but like basically I'm I was one of the little toxic like Call of Duty kids back in 2008 or something when I was like 13 years old, probably saying stuff I shouldn't be saying on Xbox Live, you know. And when I was 14, um, I wanted to go to a LAN event. It was an ECL EGL or something like that in Liverpool, but I was 14 and my mum said no. So that was the end of my short-lived uh, competitive career. Uh, <laughs> and from there, like, I was... Th- there was a big, like, competitive sniping scene with, like, uh, Optic and FaZe coming up and such. Like, and I, I played with, like, Hex and uh, Corrosive and a bunch of old-school Optic people uh, back then. Mm. And then they got into game battles, which I didn't know was owned by MLG at the time, blah, blah, blah. I kind of followed them along effectively, so uh, there was like pro mod for a bit or like a console version of it. And I always just, I liked playing Call of Duty a lot and Halo a little bit. And, and that was really about it on my eSports knowledge until um, like Optic started getting into like actual competition. And then they sound like Halo and, and Counter-Strike and, and everything else. So in a sense, I was one of the toxic like green wall weirdos, but I was never vocal Christ. about it. Uh, yeah, I know. I actually, I actually grew up on like most of them. They're like ten years on, but they're still the same age mentally. Um, yeah. And and from that, I'd, like I was aware of other games, and I, I guess I was somewhat aware of like competing. I didn't know the scale of it though by any means, so I missed out on a lot of the old school Counter Strike stuff, for example. I've since gone back and watched them, but yeah, basically, it just came from from Call of Duty, and I don't know the exact point where I really started paying attention to esports, but. Uh, I've been in the industry working in it for about four years. So I'd say maybe six, seven years I've been fully aware of it. And I, I, I got in like pretty sheer luck. I was like blogging on the side, like about movies and shit, which I think a lot of writers yeah. <laughs> used to do. That's how they, they got in. It was like, well, I know better than the cunts reviewing it at the moment. Like this, I should be having my say. Um, and I was always like pretty good academically. So like writing was just pretty, I don't know. It came to me very easily. And, uh, I googled esports news, I think like late 2017, and like Oof. got the top 10 sites or something like that. Um, and that would have been Jake. Was that Jake Lucky's old shit? On, uh, no, then? no. I, I mean, I literally no. I literally just searched esports news on Google. Right. And like, thankfully, there was nothing to do with that, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> it would have probably been like ESPN and obviously. Right, right. Cyber that's good. Well, that's good at least. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I only discovered Jake looking maybe two years ago, so I didn't, I didn't do too bad. When he My sympathies. The story, uh, <laughs> you know, as it goes. Um, yeah, and just got, like, the emails that I could get for, like, the top 10 sites and and sent in, like, a bullshit paragraph about how I think I could offer something to them, despite not realistically knowing too much at that point. And one got back to me, and it was Esports Insider. Um, right. And I started freelancing for them. It was, like, one a day on a trial basis. Uh, January 2018, and I was full time writing in esports by April 2018. 
So like I picked it up very quickly and um, built up like a, a decent like roster of uh, websites I could write for. Mm. So yeah, I, I'd hit the ground running, and I, that's how I got into the, like the business side of reporting. By the way, just because I joined Esports Insider first, uh, I didn't really know there was like an industry beat because I was pretty ignorant to it all. Mm. Uh, I, it just kind of landed it that way, and that's what stuck with me the most. I was still doing the bullshit match reports for League of Legends and Dota, the stuff you have to do when you need to make a living as a freelancer. Um, but yeah, that, that's I just fell into it entirely and, and happened to like be better than everyone else there, in my opinion. So it, it worked out. So what were you doing initially then? Because obviously I've got your, you know, I mean, it's actually ridiculous how much content you put out while you're at Esports Insider. Uh, oh, you know, what, what was a lot of it just fucking the, the grind of the press release rewrites or, you yes. know, yeah, taking other people's news and kind of putting your own spin on it, that type of thing? Uh, effectively, yeah. But I also, like, I, I wanted to, like, interview people straight away. So I think one of the first people... I interviewed was like Blackbeard, who's a social media manager for Hundred Thieves. Yeah, now. I know him. He just yeah. joined uh, Optic at the time, well, like the Infinite Optic and such. So I can't think of any others because I've written way too much. But yeah, it was just the standard grinding it out. I think like building up my knowledge. I don't really realize it at the time, but like it, I've kind of got like an encyclopedic memory of like the past four years now with all the deals and bullshit that have gone on acquisitions and, and company structures and such. So like it actually helped me a lot get to the point where like I, I can bang together an opinion piece that's pretty well-rounded, I think, not just seeing it from one view. Uh, but yeah, it, it was no real original work besides like some easy interviews formatted poorly and, and marketed poorly as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, look, it, it, we'll, we'll do the sort of uh, the, the classic <laughs> esports journalist's journey talk here. And that is that I don't think people really kind of realize when they get into it, um, kind of what you will be doing initially. And, you know, it's not, it's not really any different uh, to what you would do at a regular publication. It's just kind of, I think you, you just do more of it because that's the type of content that, you know, for some reason, every new site thinks yeah, you have to report on everything that's already been reported on elsewhere, that if you ignore it somehow, not having an archive, a complete archive of the history uh, devalues your site. When, of course, mm -hmm. it's basically what I always call journalism as opposed to journalism. Yep. You just churn out content. And so, obviously, at the start, I mean, and it was the same for me, you just are basically like, this thing happened. It's been reported on over here, or it's a press release, so everybody gets it simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Write it up for the site. And your post will be superficially no different to anyone else's post on any other site. And you just have to hope it's your version. That is the one that gets the most traffic out of all the other versions that are going on. It's just, it's not very satisfying work. I think it really disheartens people at the start of their career. Yeah. I, I, that, that's exactly what I was doing. And I'll be completely honest with you. Like I actually didn't mind it for some strange reason. Uh, I found it all really interesting. So like, I, I had no like formal training in journalism or anything like that. As I say, like I just started by myself. I ended up writing for a comic bookie website who do all the cover all the movies, news, and all that bullshit there. So like, I was already pretty well versed in just churning out shite. Yeah. Um, but it was just uh, for for whatever reason, like the esports industry actually really interested me at the start when I was doing that. Maybe the first year, mm -hmm. uh, maybe because it was just something new and it was established. But like, there's still a lot that's not been done versus other industries that you look at sports or something. Um, and, and yeah, it just kind of, it interested me a lot. And I, I can't, I look back and I can't really identify why. Uh, so it, it took a while for me to realize that's all I was doing. I was like, well, you're never going to like make something of yourself too much doing that. Maybe you can be like a, a solid senior writer at a publication or something, but you're never mm. going to be the superstar investigative journalist that gets all the awards and all that shit, um, which I never really, thought of myself as but like kind of got to the point where it was like oh wow i'm getting considered for awards now and i am breaking stories and such um thankfully i had that kind of ambition there um, yeah but I, I, I probably would have been satisfied for a couple of years just doing the entirely just doing the churning shit to be honest and then it had worn me down like it has done anyway but yeah and, and that good. that's the other thing to it right i mean so a, a couple of points on that so the first thing is i really 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 and i mean i can't express this enough i really hate hate uh the sort of beat journalists that just do the journalism and they're super happy to do it 
and they don't build up any brands and they don't have any ambition and they wear this like badge of, hey, I'm a, I'm a journalist for this publication. The games industry is filled with them. Um, and it's like they don't get better and they don't contribute anything of significant value. And that that's the bulk of the industry now, unfortunately. And I think and, we've got a lot, them, a lot of them in League of Legends, especially. It seems, seems yeah. Like yeah, I mean, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, because we'll talk about this too, you know, the people that are like the anonymous accounts that are like doing all the leaks, that, that's, I've got problems with that too, but they're definitely a, a step up from the rewriters. Um, but yeah, and then the, the other thing, obviously, of course, is that we don't, we don't get, uh, we don't retain our best people in esports journalism because they get fucking burned out on doing this bullshit. Like, I mean, when you think of journalism, I mean, if you're like me, you know, I want it to be, you've been up for four days straight in a fucking smoky room, desperately trying to put pieces together, you know, <clears throat> whiteboards, uh, you know, post-it notes everywhere, like an event, and, you know, you're waiting on that one interview or that one leak or that one chat log or, you know, whatever it is. Um that's why I wanted to to do it to sort of like right. t- turn over stones, uh, but um, but I too had to go through that gauntlet of just here's a bunch of shit you have to do first, and you have to do this for years before anyone will let you take a run at breaking yeah. a story. It is an initiation, and I, I can't quite work out why. It's almost Ooh. like yeah, you Ooh. have to like earn your spot, don't you? And it's like well. I could earn it by doing good work. <laughs> How yeah. about that? But instead, it's like, no, nah, no, nah, prove that you haven't got a soul like us. <laughs> and, then, yep. and then and then we'll let you at it. I don't know. Because um, as, as a junior writer, uh, kind of newish writer, I'm aware of at the moment who's trying to break through and investigate stuff in esports and mm. uh, the publication they're at just will not let them have a crack at anything. Yeah. Uh, so my, my advice was like, put together the full report if you can and then present it to them. They're more likely to say yes when you've got a banging original story. Uh, you know, you might have to do something in your own spare time, but I mean, like, if you're really hungry to break through, like, that's nothing. Yeah. You know? uh, but like, yeah, it's, I can't even think how my first scoop, scoop actually came about. I just kind of, I don't, I don't think um, it was planned by any means, which is kind of good. I, I ate all the shit. And yeah. Then slowly transitioned, but I've still been eating some shit even to this day, like four years on. I still have to do the, especially on the business side. The views are even. It's like a niche of a niche. So esports yeah. viewership is shit, but esports business viewership is fucking, or readership, I should say, is yeah. abysmal. So like, you still have to eat some of the shit to be able to afford to to do the good stuff. It is, <laughs> which don't help too much, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, well, that that's the other interesting part. I mean, you know, you've got to, you know, yeah, people also don't realize that it's like it's very good to have a specificity to what you do, because it once you can demonstrate having a, a, a source network in a particular field and therefore by extension knowledge and expertise in a particular field, suddenly your work goes up in value provided the the area of that expertise has that readership, has that viewership. And so I'm like you, you know, for me, I was, uh, you know, people probably think about me as being a Counter-Strike guy, uh, because, you know, the I buy power story is like some fucking landscape changing story. And it's all anybody ever wants to talk about. I dropped bigger stories in League of Legends. I dropped way more bigger stories in League of Legends, even recently. Stuff that has actually changed the fabric of that game and how Riot Games operates. Uh, and, and you know, and I've done it in smaller games. I, I remember fucking Smite. I, I was Bloody one of the hell. first guys to do roster leaks in that. If you can get your head around that. And famously, <laughs> famously, it led to someone threatening to slash my car tires when I don't even drive uh, a pro player. Um, so it's like you have to have a beat and you have to have that knowledge and that insight into something that's niche. And me and you were super similar in the sense that the thing that fascinates me most of all is the business. It's it's the business. That's where all the dirt is. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it's, it's behind everything, right? So like, even, even if you report on business, you could be reporting on the LCS because, it, like today, uh, as a recording list, like Immortals have um, yeah. accepted a naming sponsor. So, like, though it is business, like it's specific to that one league, it could be like looking into the Call of Duty League, something like that. So, it, it's actually quite lucky in that it is niche, but it also can, can cover quite a lot. Um, so, so that that's all right. But, like, also, I think people have, like, 
for some reason have the thought that esports is niche within itself. And I'm like, well, it's like saying you're a sports journalist. Like, what are you actually covering there? Yeah. It's, it's, and there's more esports than there are like prominent sports. So like I, I don't I don't see how stretching yourself that thin is is really going to help too much. Uh, that's why it makes sense for uh, like people at like HLTV. It's so like Counter Strike in a sense is lucky it's got a site that's dedicated to it, whereas like League of Legends doesn't, and it doesn't have that many beat reporters versus what it could have. I think if there was a good enough site, um, mm. though I, I think there's a lot of as you say like journalists and people who just go. Go to the um, go to the LCS or LEC. Just ask the same fucking questions, and they print it across like four different publications. It seems to me, it's just copy and paste shit. Um, I I do think um, a beat is incredibly important, but also not that many journalists are afforded that opportunity yet, or have yeah. that opportunity or grab that opportunity for themselves <coughs> to have that out for themselves in esports yet. That's why you've got a lot of generalists. So like, if you join Deserto right now, unless it specifically is an esports writer you'll probably have to muck in with like the Call of Duty League and what Jake Paul is doing with his next fight and also the latest like cooking trend on TikTok. You know what I mean? Like you're not afforded the opportunity to go, right, okay, I'm going to concentrate on something because like you need to make a living and it's a modest living yeah. at that. Um, and, but, <clears throat> like a lot, of, a lot of people I think still see themselves lucky that they can afford to pay the bills and live off of like mm. this bullshit coverage like and they're getting to cover something they love one every 10 hours and i i always say this and to sort of hate it that i say this uh and i'm an editor at large so i mean like you know i don't have any people see the word editor and they think i'm like fucking there like you know you submit, <laughs> yeah you submit a report to me and i go uh that this is outrageous you know and like <laughs> you've got all these spelling errors or you know whatever the yeah. fuck it is no yeah. an, ed an editor at large specifically is basically like a, a roaming ronin journalist that temporarily comes into a publication and gets to essentially do what they want uh, because of their kind of body of work or their presence adds some inherent value to the site, which yeah. I realize sounds unbelievably conceited when you frame it like that. But that, that is, is true. That is what an editor at large does. So, you know, I, I, I say it all the time uh, that God bless the people that write Jake Paul's latest TikTok fight trend cooking yeah. Yeah. special. All that stuff. Yeah, those stories. Because, you know, they're the ones that basically enable the Serto to have somebody like me around and, you know, maybe I'll drop a story that's, you know, a, a, a big one, um, you know, and publish it over there. So it's like, I mean, that's another unfortunate economic reality of journalism. Mm -hmm. It's one in the mainstream too. You've got to do the stuff that trends and, and drives ad rev because if you don't, you can't afford to pay the good journalists that might need to spend six months on one story. Mm -hmm. And it's strange as well, like the majority, of, as far as I'm aware, the, the majority of readership at Deserto comes from the entertainment. It does, stuff. yeah, it's huge. But, yeah. but I think the majority of revenue comes from the esports stuff, because if you look at all the sponsored coverage and stuff, it's on like um, Blast Hubs. Or mm. like we'll we'll do a, a spawn like all the video and podcast series that they do is typically sponsored, whether it's like DJ Sports or Razor or something. Yeah. So like it's a it's a strange one where esports brings in the minority of readership, but the majority of revenue. I could be wrong on that, but that's how it definitely how it seems. Uh, which I I can't quite wrap my head around why people want to be attached to the thing that gets lesser views, but it is inherently like esports is somehow more interesting than a TikTok just. Yeah, it's it's one of those growth breakout industries and like a lot of, you know, growth break. Yeah, I mean, even now, right, you know, you keep hearing that we're mainstream, we're mainstream, we're mainstream. And first of all, you should never aspire to be mainstream. That's like the worst thing for anything that was kind of cool or underground at one point. Um, you know, as I say, shout out to the punk movement. Um but the the the, re, the reality is when we're still not quite fully mainstream and so people are like just a little bit more money a little bit more sponsorship and we can have a bigger slice of a pie that's constantly expanding mm -hmm. um and so yeah there's just it's like one of those buzzwords you know like crypto nft cloud you, you know these words that get put onto investment pitches and people see esports and they bite because they know it's hip and it's the new hotness mm -hmm. and i I've, there's this observation that i i i can't i can't have come up with but it's one that i like i love a lot and it's like you see a lot of the people are specifically on linkedin for the most part as well because of course it is but they'll say in 10 years esports will be massive 
And then like a year will go by and they'll say in 10 years, esports will be massive. And then another year and it goes on and on. And I'm, I've been in four years now and it's still like, I'm still waiting for it to get massive. And the, the, the timer doesn't seem to be, seem to be ticking whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if it's going to be like little by little. And then one day there's going to be like one deal or like one broadcast broadcast rights deal or one media rights deal that just blows it up. And uh, I, I kept, but then again, like if anything gets on ESPN, even like ESPN five, you'll have all the boomers tweeting about, I'm like, Oh, this isn't a spot. Like mm. what the fuck's this? So I, I don't know what it will take for us to, to get mainstream, but like me, I prefer like us being profitable. That would be yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't care if sustainable. Care yeah. You know, the industry can go on. Yeah. And we can have these amazing matches and stuff without worrying if like talent are going to get paid and <laughs> everything else, you know, like that, that's what I care about. More. Yeah. I mean, so just before we start talking about segueing into, you know, being an investigative journalist, here's something I've got to ask you about uh, publishing stuff over at LinkedIn. Uh, yes. because obviously like a lot of people consider this to be like a new emerging content frontier. There does seem to be a lot of wisdom in that, by the way, uh, popular posts on LinkedIn do seem to, uh, do uh, very good numbers and in its own little sphere mm-hmm. it kind of go viral. Yeah. Um, but me, I'm very LinkedIn a- 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 averse. I'm on record as having called it Facebook for cunts, um, which, <laughs> <laughs> maybe That's... business cunts because facebook is for cunts yeah i'm so gonna say like, feel, facebook's for just like boomer cunts so like and, professional yeah. cunts well, yeah professional cunts professional yeah cunts. um but you know it, it's like for me uh you know i i it's not like a world i want to get into because every time i open linkedin to you know because 500 people have added me a pitch fucking dog shit business opportunities or whatever in my dms mm-hmm. um I go over there and I see a post from someone who's like professing to be an esports expert. Yeah. And uh, they are talking bollocks and just lying about their uh, expertise. And uh, LinkedIn just seems to be full of that now. So yeah. I wanted to ask about your experience kind of, you know, writing for that world because you must have seen some shit. Thankfully, I kind of like, I uh, employ a strategy called Post and Ghost. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I mean, like, I, I, I effectively controlled the Certo's LinkedIn uh, mm. for now, uh, thankfully getting away from that soon. And so I'll, I'll post it, put all the hashtags at the bottom that I feel like will work, but I've never done any research on that. So it's like hashtag esports, hashtag esports business, hashtag sports business, because like, oh, esports is a sport. And just try and maximize it that way. Maybe tag the person who's involved in the story in it, in a comment from my own personal account to maybe get their eyes on it. And then mm. I bounce. So like, I haven't seen that much thankfully but like, i do have an example a recent example of like one of the linkedin grifters in esports actually making it so there's a geezer called william collis who i think he calls himself the professor of esports now like i think he's maybe like given a guest lecture at harvard once or something like that but he right. wrote a book called the book of esports he's got okay. a, pod- a podcast called the business of esports with, with the tagline the official podcast of esports um <laughs> he started it i promise you i promise you you'll find all of this <laughs> I promise you. And then, but it gets even better. Okay. Uh, and that's with a guy who calls himself, um, oh, fuck, profit, but like not mm. like, but like P R O F I T. Oh, He's okay. Profit of esports because my man's making, making the longer, obviously. Yeah, um, sure. But apart from that, he, he, um, sold like an analytics company and, and something else to esports entertainment group for like 40 mil. And then also, he found, co founded Oxygen Esports, which is the latest company to get into the Call of Duty League. Uh, receiving sponsorship or being acquired from craft group and everything like that. So like he's somehow, I don't know how, maybe just like connections with weird grifters who make decisions, but like got himself to the point where I assume he's gotten a very healthy, like pay packet out of those two acquisitions. But yeah. he, literally his, his organization just got into the CDL and is now with the saints over Activision Blizzard. Oh Lord. I'll have to look into that. That sounds yeah, like William some... William Collis, C O L L I S. You look at him, he looks like some uh, Beavis and Butthead. Um, <laughs> I promise you, if you could, if, if there was ever a time to put up a graphic during this, that would be it. Just his profile picture. I've had it if you want, Sam. Sam said it in these, so <laughs> yeah, please, Sam, please. Yeah, like, you... I, I need to see it side by side as well because it's just the first thing I think of. Yeah, he's like the the like most successful LinkedIn esports grifter I'm, I'm aware of. Uh, and apart from that, there's just like, there's a, they're all called Chris for the most part, for some reason, and just post about how like esports is sick and how like they can help you maximize your, your revenues and such. And they mm. all have these agencies. Uh, 
it's it's a it's a bit mad, but thankfully I stay away from it. I I my my kind of like flavor of madness is Twitter. Um, yeah. I uh so I had I had I had a guy like that. This is going back a little bit when I was at E League, and uh, um he was he was I can't even remember his name off the top of my head now. But basically, he was a fucking uh he was a former he worked on like one shit game that had failed, had no esports you know functionality whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, it turns out yeah I'm talking about Bobby Cote, <laughs> um the cunt to rule them all, mate. Um. Anyway, yeah, uh, basically, yeah, he worked on some shit game. It absolutely bombed. It had panned. His name, like, popped up during Gamergate because apparently, like, said some very unsavory things um, to women. And uh, basically, as a result of that, what he'd done, what a lot of these types do, is if you have ever been a bigoted piece of shit in your life, what you what what the great change of 2015 kind of represented was almost like you could be baptized in the woke waters and absolve yourself of all sins by being like a really hyper regressive, you know, fake progressive person okay yeah yeah and and this gives you like a lot of cachet in our industry even though it's all performative and generally the people who are doing it the loudest are the ones that have the you know biggest skeletons in their closet and so he was doing this thing where he was being really aggressive uh on the woke shit and saw me uh working at e-league and obviously my previous employers before that were bright but so mm. whoopsie cool, doodle guys. Whoopsie doodle. It couldn't just be I spent seven months at some shit publication to make some scratch. I mean, you know, couldn't be that. Has no, to no, be no. I'm obviously some sort of card carrying neo Nazi, you know, right wing fucking moron. Mm -hmm. So anyway, he would start going after E League about this. And uh, basically, he had been, he, I started looking at who this guy was and it was like, he was just telling lies about all the things he'd done in esports and all the companies he'd sold and how much money he made. And I was asking right. people, going, did he sell a company to you? And they were going, nah, fuck no, I don't even know who this guy is, right? And he claimed to be a Harvard graduate. You see that brown book down there all right. uh, over, my sh over my shoulder? This is how deep I went on this cunt. I bought a fucking, I, I bought, because you can't get this. It's the Harvard records of every student who's ever attended Harvard. And I looked at the years he claimed. There's no one of his name in that book. Well, no, you're I, a better journalist I, than me because I would not buy that book. Uh, oh, the check you have to, right, the only people who have access to it are like graduates or attendees at Harvard. Right, so okay. I had to find one on the black market, buy it, <laughs> then went in. I checked every year. I went, oh, I went 10 years because he'd even fucked it up. He'd lied he, when he told the lie about being a Harvard graduate. He fucked up. He, he said he graduated for a course Harvard has never offered in its history. He said he graduated in two different years. He said class of and was wrong. And he was just a fucking lunatic. He was just a lunatic grifter in esports right. that people were taking seriously. One night he must have got fucking, you know, drunk. And he was saying, I'm going to tweet at my friends at Disney to get Richard Lewis removed from E-League, right? I don't know what the connection oh, that, is. That, that Disney product, yeah. Yeah, right? Okay. And then he was tweeting at a fucking parody Bob Iger account. Oh, no. We're tagging me into it. Oh, God. That it reminds was, me of the guy who wanted to buy um, Houston Outlaws and like tagged like, Elon Musk and oh, The Rock. Like Lee, Lee Zeban, I think it was like, hey, I'm buying... Uh, an exciting Overwatch League franchise and tag like The Rock. And once it. once you see something like that, by the way, like if, if you're a friend you're or a good. relative, go get your man, help them. Mm -hmm. That's that's a crisis. That was like when Kanye West was like, tweet, you know, just tweeting at fucking Zuckerberg saying like, listen, I've got great ideas for a company <laughs> yes. and it, it's synergy. It's just the word synergy on a piece of paper. Yeah, he'd have, he'd have his whiteboard and it'd just be like oh, schools, sad, food. <laughs> sad. But yeah, so I mean, look, LinkedIn does kind of feel like a sort of insane wasteland of grifters, but I guess that's reflective of the industry right now, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I've seen like someone I respect a lot who works in socials, they say to take your your good like tweets, I guess, like if you're tweeting about something relevant to business in any way. Mm. So say you work in socials or marketing or, or business, um, 
Like, take your tweets, bang them on there. You, you might get good traction. You'll be surprised. But, like, apart from that, that I've never seen them, like, or heard them advise anything else about LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. So, like, until that moment happens, I, I trust them a lot. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I just I just don't see the point in it. It definitely does have its own kind of, like, it, there's, there's, a, there's a tribe over there. There's, like, a crowd that doesn't exist on Twitter because I feel like if they come to Twitter and, and like, spout the same bullshit, they will get called out and found out to be a fraud or just straight liar. Yeah. pretty quickly so it's it's not a perfect uh kind of barometer but i tend to think like the more active they are on linkedin the more like they're trying to pull the wool over the eyes of people and mm. obviously that's not ideal because there will be some good people on there but uh i don't care so so it's just like, you know what i mean it's just everyone like, catches some strays you know there you go exactly it's just like if it's 90 percent effective then i've well, I've still done pretty fucking well out of it if I just ignore them all. So mm. thank, thankfully, I don't think there's anyone in like my kind of circle or like someone I consider a friend who is like big on LinkedIn. But then again, I wouldn't know because I don't check it too often. Uh, I've managed managed to avoid it, uh, but I imagine in my new job, I will also have to use it somewhat as a necessary evil or at least like experiment with it. Mm. But uh, I, I think like it's a bit easier using it from a business point of view than, than personal. I can't imagine wanting to log on and, at like 8 a.m. and see what's going on on LinkedIn because you get all like the gurus saying, I wake up at five, I go walk my dog while oh, showering. Mate. You know what I mean? I get my dog on his treadmill that I got custom. That fucking it. trend of uh, it, like esports grind slash lifestyle coaches. You, you know what I mean? Like, it's a new one. The geezer um, stopped uh, casting for the LCS this season uh, and is now a. I don't know if he called it like lifestyle coach, but it's basically that. It's like if your life shit, I've got life figured out. I'm the one person. In the yeah, I, I, I've out. got it. So figured come to out. me. Yeah, you know I mean, it's like everyone knows what to do. It's just hard to do the things that are good for you. Like, what's better, drinking water or downing a Jack Daniels? It's, yeah, we all you know, know I mean, the answer what, to that. Yeah, what well, <laughs> what's better, a shot of espresso or a fucking Jaeger bomb? It's like, well, it depends yeah. what mood you're in, I guess. But uh, everyone knows what what to do. So I guess it's like accountability. But yeah, like it's, it's definitely yeah. it's going to be more and more of those. I think we've even got an agency now that calls itself a performance agency run by a former uh, XL Esports coach. You know, the team that can't get past seventh in the LEC. <laughs> <laughs> that performance coach is now like signing players and then helping them get good by giving them like supplements. Perfect. But he, he seems a good guy, so I don't want to. I don't want to give him too much shit. I just find it. See, you're, you're you're in that mad mad world I'm in, where it's like you like the people, but you hate the <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's and, and and unfortunately, uh, they can't separate. Like you know, we can go get a beer or whatever. I'll help mm-hmm. you out, but I'm not going to pretend what you're doing is, you know, exactly. Yeah, good. and it's but like if you truly think someone's doing something like bad. Like it's it's almost I don't know it's almost hard to justify it. Like I can somewhat separate the person from what they're doing professionally, um, uh, somewhat I will say because that's a slippery slope if I just agree with that across the board. But um, yeah, like I'm friends with people who like have jobs that I think are complete bullshit. Like I've got a mate who runs um, like Wolves Esports, like the the official like team for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Yeah, we're like, in partnership with Evil Geniuses. They're, they're, yeah, which now Evil Geniuses have invested in the parent company of Wolves, so it's a two way tie now. Oh nice. Um, and thankfully, like I reported on it, or else no one would have done. And Psionics wouldn't have changed the rule book, which actually didn't change much. But like, it at least said, like, oh look, we're aware there's conflicts of interest here going on. But mm. they are allowed to compete in the same region. And right. also, um, Evil Geniuses like jacket they were wearing has an uh, has um, a Wolves logo on it as well. So they're co-marketing both brands at the same time. Nice, but, but it's not a conflict of interest. Uh, I mean, like, to, yeah, my mate works there, and I had to, I, I had to Discord message him like, "Hey, mate, can you give me a, can you get a statement for me about your day job? Because like this is fucked." <laughs> you know, what I mean, it's an awkward situation because I love the guy to bits, great guy, but it's uh, like the company he works for is a bit of a weird one. How do you feel about the mindset that I see commonly espoused in esports that it's because it's a small emergent industry, uh, conflict of interest? is uh it's it's inevitable and um we should sort of turn a blind eye to that until we're bigger than what we are i i never think we should turn a blind eye like e- even if we concede to the fact like it will help us in the short term to have people running multiple things like if anything that's a call for more transparency like and they need to make that very obvious as well so like we've got enthusiast gaming which runs many media companies and, and websites and such but they've got Luminosity, Seattle Surge, Vancouver Titans, so three esports teams and brands, as well as Upcomer. Like, mm. to me, that should be made 
explicitly clear what's what. If they're operating separate and they say that, like I couldn't, I still don't believe it necessarily, but I could, I may be willing to give them a bit of a benefit of the doubt, or I'll at least look at them and say, okay, there's a chance for a little bit of fuckery there, a little bit of maybe um, un, like unconscious bias towards something into, but like the writers shouldn't have anything to do with that anyway. It should just be the management that are involved with the management of the parent company. Mm -hmm. So I, I never think turn a blind eye. I, I don't think that helps anyone. I think uh, if, <laughs> whether it's best for the industry or not, like I, I can't really say. I prefer everything to be clear cut, but then probably a lot of the organizations we've got and a lot of the, the decent companies we have in esports wouldn't exist in some degree. Um, so I don't know where esports would be if we never had that. But I, I think it, it, it would be a lot better. We're better off if the geezer who's invested in a better collective and thus HLTV and Astralis made that explicitly clear. Like, I don't have any operational say here, but like, look, I am involved in this and I'm involved in that. I, I, I would certainly do that. If I ever start yeah. my own venture, but I have to do it part time while working for a company, like, I, it's the first thing I would do. I'd make it explicitly clear because I don't want anyone to, to think I'm a nefarious geezer, you know? But like, for some reason, people want to hide it. Like Dark Zero, um, which mm. finally got published the other day that they're owned by a billionaire, which I got told a long time ago, but couldn't, couldn't use the information. Um, uh, like they invested in Raven, which is like an esports merch brand that yeah. produces stuff for other brands, maybe like Space Station Gaming and such. Like the, the press release went out that, um, Raven had received, received $1 million, uh, but it never said who from. So I went into their company's house because they're a UK company, found it was Dark Zero, got a comment from Dark Zero, and they said, yeah, we well, were never hiding it. We're proud of this, in fact. Like, yeah, please publish it. And it's like, for fuck's sake, like, you could, you could be getting, like, some information on, like, teams you compete against in Rainbow Six and such, because, like, uh, if you get a jersey sample to show the new sponsor what it would look like if they got the... I don't know, like the um, collar spot on your jersey. Like, if your if your a company you're invested in is dealing with that, they could tell you that they're courting G Fuel or they're courting um, Toyota, and you could reach out to them, offer a more competitive price. Like, there's a bunch of uh, wormholes you could go down. There's like there's so many sure. different possibilities for this shit. But like, yeah, the, I I, th I think like put it out there and then let people decide whether they want to trust you or not. That's up to them. But at least you can kind of kind of control um what's true and and say like look there's no operational overlap between upcomer and seattle surge titans and luminosity but we want to make this explicitly clear because we understand that this isn't the best look if we were bad people you mm. know but instead they did none of that you know it's, so so i think it has to be out there I, that's how i operate at least but i don't expect people to operate the same way yeah, well, I mean, look, back to the story we were just talking about previously, because, again, I think it's important to kind of, like, explicitly state the role that journalism does have in kind of, um, uh, you know, curating and guiding the the integri integrity protocols around esports. E e um, obviously, with the EG and Wolves partnership story, yeah. you, you were the guy that was on that you know, despite not necessarily being endemic to Rocket League. Mm -hmm. I got to sit back and chuckle at the responses because, you know, I've heard that shit a million times. It doesn't matter. It went, so what? You just leave it white. You say in the place we try and lose. And just all the nonsense. Mm -hmm. But it actually did lead to Psionics updating their rules yes. and, ex and basically explicitly stating that, you know, you can't, you can't have that type of conflict of interest in their competitive scene. So yeah. you've actually affected a big positive change in Rocket League, a scene that I now hope just burns and and and, and once it's finished burning, the flames are put out with piss. And what one facet of like journalism I don't like is like, so you get that change made, which I think you could agree is like a net positive. Because mm -hmm. like, it hasn't affected them in any way. Their investments stand. They're going to make shit tons of money from the Chinese company they've just invested in eventually. Um, but like now, as peace of mind, to them, there should be, or at least Sionix and I acknowledge the fact that, um, okay, no operational roles can overlap here whatsoever. Like it's a net positive, but like they don't give a fuck. It's so thankless. Mm -hmm. Like it is, is, you, you've got to be happy knowing that you're doing something for the greater good or else yeah. it will fucking eat you alive or you'll feel like, okay, well, I spent reading, spent fucking 
two hours reading through a rule book looking for something and it wasn't actually in there. I needed a different rule book. Like you think, oh, well, what the fuck is the point? Like it's just, I'm doing it for, for no reason whatsoever besides, I guess, getting a shit wage. So like, I, I <laughs> yeah, it's, it's nice that that happened and I didn't expect it to. I thought they'd turn a blind eye to be completely honest because it's what what's going to happen in a week. Everyone will forget about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it is a, it's an example of like, even though it isn't celebrated by the community and stuff, like in a way that could in future, you never know, like stop something sure. really shit happening, which, which is nice. And I wish I'd, I had a lot more stories that I've done that over my four years, to be honest, um, or where you can see like a tangible result from it, at least, mm. uh, because it, it can be quite disheartening at times, I think, the job. Yeah. Well, let's, so let's talk about just the more investigative aspects mm -hmm. and why you started gravitating towards that. Yeah. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm probably a bit snobbish about it. I do consider essentially the re like, I recognize there's multiple types of journalism, but for me, investigative journalism is it's the be all and end all essentially it's it's the yardstick of good journalism uh it's the most impactful it's the hardest to do it's the one where you're risking the most to get the story out uh it's high stakes it's high stakes all around um and uh not a lot of people have the stomach for it, it because of that because if you get something wrong your career is over because you've essentially mm -hmm. accused someone of something. You could get sued in oblivion, by the way. Uh, you could bankrupt the publication, uh, you know, a la Gorka, um, which, by the way, is a good thing. Uh, but, you know, so it's high, high stakes at all times. And so, you know, I've got to ask why, if you've got like a relatively cushy and safe job and, hey, I'm, publishing opinion pieces now and this is kind of engaging yeah, yeah. why would you want to go and do the, the the risky one i guess i hate myself no um <laughs> i i think i think it's just like i'm a curious person um mm. it's probably what it comes down to uh because like as as we've said like you just go and write a mindless amount of articles just churning out bullshit and and eventually when you start to I think like when when everything kind of lodged in my brain, I understood somewhat about how these things were working. You'd just read something and it'd be like, well, that why would they do that? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just there's a little spark or something. And then and then you're in company's house, like looking at the great aunt of someone who's like bankrolling this project. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, you know, where she, it's just, I don't know. It, it, just, it just started with a, a thread or something. So I think like the, probably the first biggish kind of article or uh, uh, report or scoop or whatever was um, Optic selling to infinite or infinite selling to immortals it should be actually mm. so it was like me and and jacob wolf re reporting on that um yeah i remember that and i said i was like I, like i said earlier i was like an optic fan back in the day but like didn't really care at that point but um I, I was just curious i guess to see what was going on there and also the whole infinite experiment was really interesting as a whole anyway i think there were some merits to how they were trying to do things um, but it didn't quite work out. And then I was thinking, like, right, well, what happens with Immortals? Because they've already got multiple brands. They have Valiant. So how can they have Outlaws? And they've got Immortals. So how can they have Optic Gaming? Like, how is this going to work out? So um, thankfully, I was somewhat well positioned with uh, contacts in in, those, in that realm, I should say. Yeah. I, I, won't, I won't say where, but, like, thankfully, it, it just kind of aligned well. So I, I think it was kind of, like, <clears throat> uh, good good timing and good positioning on that one. Uh, realistically and also i was just curious about what the fuck would happen so it wasn't like groundbreaking journalism by any means it was like yeah this deal is going to go through therefore this is going to happen and now laws is expected to sell to blah 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 uh like blizzard are gonna have to take over it until they find a, a seller mm. i think it's just it's straight, straight curiosity but then uh the past year or so it's probably an, probably been animosity because i think a lot of companies are fucking shit yeah uh, and i'm really disenfranchised and i'm really sick of a lot of bullshit um so i i the thing is, I came up with a there was a lot of battles I kind of had to fight over the past year in terms of justifying doing it because at one point uh, I was told stuff like we don't have the resources to do investigative journalism. In other yeah. words, crack on with your news pieces. I think is that is kind of how I took it. Um, you know, so I I, I couldn't get, I couldn't do as much as I I, I would have liked, but I, I've still been rather curious and and rather just pissed off and bored at a lot of these shit heads who just lie. And a lot of the times it's like, you'll hear that they're lying, but like, you need to be able to prove it. Like, yeah. I think, 
I think that's probably been the driving force a lot of the times now because like, I'm hearing stuff about like I'll say an organization like G2, but like I like I'll be honest, like I've been looking into them for a while trying to get something, but like it's it's not happened. So I, I'm I'm happy saying that. And um well, that maybe means they're completely clean. Who knows? Because I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna try and accuse them of anything. Um I either put out a report or I don't, but like I hear a lot, but like if I can't get anything solid, then it's 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 never gonna go out. So I think a lot of it now is also maybe clearing up who's bullshitting to me and who's not in a sense as well. If you could do a simple mm. fact check and, and cross-reference cross with someone. Yeah, I, you know, I, I kind of feel as well like it, it's been, uh, you know, the, like the past couple of years has been especially like insufferable. I, you know, I don't know if it's just the industry or if it's me, you know, because I'm jaded. I guess someone that's been in the space <clears> like four or five years, six years, um, feeling the same way uh, probably validates that there's a problem. But it just seems to be like all the time now, you know, it just, it's just like a never ending slew of bullshit poured on your face from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed, you have to pick and choose your battles all the time. It's a con mm-hmm. and, and, and they are constant and unrelenting. Every time you try and be the adult voice in the room saying, this is a problem. We should probably do something about this. All of the fans, and, and and anyone that's invested in the thing you're criticizing uh, just remorselessly attack you. And so you end up kind of like asking yourself, yeah, like, what is the point? You know, why take all these risks? Why do something that's going to fundamentally negatively impact on my life to make an industry better that I am increasingly becoming disenchanted with? Mm-hmm. It, it is. It's insanity, right? <laughs> Yeah, you, you can yeah, yeah, you must at some level fucking hate yourself <laughs> or enjoy the fucking the bullshit, enjoy the fight. Like, um, like I lost the chip on my shoulder, I think, mm. and uh that was driving me, and then it and then it was just like, okay, then why why am I gonna bother? Like genuinely, why am I gonna bother? And then it was like, because I don't want to let these cunts win. <laughs> mm. is, is what my mind always goes back to and i've not done like the, the magnitude of your stories in any way like so um the, the shit that you've had to come up against as well is is nothing i mean i only got called a nazi for the first time last month so um <laughs> I, I, i've been relatively <laughs> rookie like, numbers exactly i literally rookie got, numbers. Know, and the thing is they actually said you mm. have the energy of a modern nazi which n- isn't technically calling me a nazi either it's saying i have nazi energy Okay. whatever that means but like so I, i've not come up against anything near the amount you have nor like nor am i anywhere near your like body of work um but still i i can, I can relate on, on on many levels and i can see why somebody would be uh just completely drained from from wanting to help people who don't want to help themselves is, yeah. is maybe the best way i can put it I mean, listen. I, I, I think. Uh, by the way, I think your body works uh, really impressive. Um, so, you know, I, I want to talk about a few. Like, what would you say uh, is you know the defining story so far of yes. your career? What's it's, the one that you are the most proud of? The work you it, did. It's a story that only exists on two people's hard drives, and that's ours. <laughs> I don't, oh. I don't know if you remember, but I looked No, of course. Yeah, I didn't I know if you wanted to talk about yeah. that. Well, a geezer who looks like Dr. Evil. Um, <laughs> like, so, so as um, uh, Jens Hilger, uh, behind Bitcraft, like chairman of G2, formerly loaned money to Fnatic, and um, at one point through Bitcraft, owned, like, co owned the Story Mob, which is a PR agency, mm. and Esports Observer, which is a publication. So, like, it kind of shows you he do not care about blurring the lines at all. Uh, it was a look into um, kind of the atmosphere and environment at his, one of his companies. I think it, it was either Shadow.gg, which got taken down, but it was in the same offices as like Baze, which is a data company. I think partnered with Riot Games for the LCS. Mm-hmm. So it was a look into that and, and how people were being treated. I sp- that's the longest I've spent on a piece that got out. I've spent longer on pieces that never saw the light of day uh, for several reasons. And it was probably the most important. Well, it definitely was the most important because... It was people who had no voice who tried to use a voice and got fucking nowhere. Um, and it exposed uh, a geezer I already thought was shifty anyway because of his business ties. Um, but like it showed the office environment and, and how certain people were treated. Um, but yeah, as you said earlier about like the threat of just being like sued, like that is enough for most publications to just pull a story. 
So I think it was maybe out there in the world for an hour and a half. Um, and then it got taken down. So I have a copy of it and I sent you a copy of it because you reached out at the time and said like, hi, do you have this? And, and then, and then that, that's it. So the piece I'm most proud of is one that doesn't exist online, uh, which is quite a shitty feeling, to be honest with yeah. you. Um, and I guess when I leave the server, there's technically nothing stopping me put it, putting it on like my own website or something, but then I have to be like strapped with cash, which I work in esports journalism. So that is not the case. Uh, you know, so yeah, it's something I probably won't ever see the light of day, to be honest. But yeah, I'm proud of it because I, I think it it showed the true colors of someone who has hurt and negatively impacted people's lives on a very real basis. Mm. Uh, what about any others? I mean, like in terms of ones that people could go and like check out now, what would you say? Oh God, on the spot. Um, so I, I did a few optic gaming ones, which people might like, I guess um, I would have to do a Google search. or like go through like search on the search for sources to even remember at this point. Cause mm. I'm, I'm just fully like checked out of journalism mode in my head at the moment. Right. To be completely honest, to be completely honest with you, um, I, I can't say I've looked into the story for the past fucking month or so. Um, but it's it's main, it's mainly crappy business stuff in a sense where it's like X has invested in this and never said it. Or mm. um, okay, there's a conflict of interest here, then no one's going to do anything. I look for the rule book, rule book, and it doesn't say you can do this, you can do that. Um, CEOs being hired eventually, like easy scoops that are not actually going to benefit anyone in a sense you know uh, to be completely honest so like yeah i, I can't i can't, i'm genuinely not that proud of my my body of work at all so i struggle to pick anything out beyond beyond like the the end one to be to be completely honest but mm. um if you go on like esports insider or go on deserto and do a search for sources um on esports insider you'll definitely only see me uh and on deserto 173 nope. pages of articles there you go and maybe on, 10, on the 10 pieces are actually sick That's about <laughs> it, you know um i don't know I, I i one thing i found over the past year at deserto i had like a weekly column and mm. and the views back this up for the most part is like that the pieces of mine that stick with people the most are like just opinion pieces yeah which i don't know how to feel about it because one is kind of like okay people value what i have to say enough to click and read it or maybe the title is inflammatory enough to to bait people yeah, into reading sure. it that's probably more what it is well, maybe or, or either or it was like it was quite consistent with like my opinion pieces and then like the other things that I do. So that I I don't know how to take it, but that's something I've noticed. Like people tend to care about what I have to say, which I think at least, which suggests I have a decent reputation, which lines up with what I hear because like people are going calls, like people I work with or whatever, and I get mm. brought up quite a lot, or so I'm told by them. Uh so that feels like a nice little like oh, shit, I have done something, even when I'm not feeling too hot about my, my like, investigative work. Yeah, I think our brains have kind of been rewired, honestly, to, um, you know, we we sort of gravitate and seek out opinions, and you're right, there's an aspect of it where it's uh, the more inflammatory, you know, the, the better. I think a lot of yeah. people basically use the internet for arguing, you know, and, and very little else. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Well, if I, if, I, if I do an opinion piece called, like, Immortals might be good this year, versus, like... <laughs> Mortals will be the best organization yeah. in 2022. It's just like you need you need something to stand out now because I also I don't think many people go to Deserto and then like browse the homepage. I think most of it will come from Google, and I yeah. think mo most of it will come from Twitter as well. But also they'll just read the headline and move on a lot of the time. So yeah. like it's at that point where they read the headline and move on, you need to include most shocking thing possible here. If you look at like how your videos for Deserto are titled sometimes, it's like even like the block capital words that I don't understand the logic behind. And you have, and you have to gain it like that. Unfortunately, clickbait is very over. I don't want to call it clickbait because that isn't what's going it's on. It's baiting people to click. So like it's the technical yeah. term is right, but the way people have like accosted it to mean like not what, it yeah, means. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's not yeah, it's not that because uh, uh, yeah, clickbait back in the day used to just imply that it was something that literally baited you click, and essentially there was a switch. The content you clicked on either didn't deliver what it said it was going to do, or cloaked it in such a way you had to click another fucking ten times to get through it, or whatever. But mm -hmm. I mean, you know, like unfortunately, the way things work right now, and Desert were very good at this, is there are these ways to sort of out gain the algorithm 
and basically like doing that thing with certain words and certain words being capitalized yeah, I don't get at it. certain times. I work in that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, I, I'm it, this is like a, probably a ridiculous boomer thing to say. I'm just disinterested in it. I don't want that knowledge in my Oh, brain. you're saying you don't title them yourself. Like you, you ah, don't go like, oh, I need no. to block like Navi here and then, yeah, like, like I, I, I literally give that over to the when I record a video, it's just a moron shouting into a webcam. That's it, that's the end of my creative mm-hmm. process. And then I give it over to the DeSoto team and they do the rest. They do the thumbnail. I was gonna uh, ask, that's one they thing they title to it in this, yeah. Do you, do you have to do like the thumbnail faces or like? Uh, fortunately, because I'm all I'm just in a permanent state of molding. <laughs> I'm all I ever do you know, yeah. Yeah, like you're yeah. fucking sucking a dick or I mean, that one's super popular, isn't it? Like that's the big one. Like, I had that was the one thing I wanted to ask. Someone's just goosed you, like you know, <laughs> yeah, like it those just, faces. Yeah, it's like you just had a prostate exam. It's like at that moment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Comfort, you know. Um. So I mean, so you know, I don't do that. And and they they do that, and they know. I mean, look, this is one of the funny things. Like, the, 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 everyone pretends there's like this, like super clandestine. Everyone's got the science down. I mean, you know, Phase, for example, um, that went in that Tifu lawsuit that got settled. They were trying to imply that by virtue of like explaining, you know, telling t- like telling Tifu if you do that in a thumbnail, it'll get more clicks than if you're not there. They were trying to make out that was like a trade secret. <laughs> you know, it's like... It's it, go on YouTube. Yeah, it's like, for fuck's sake, bro. Awesome. Like, have you seen... Like, you just click on you, YouTube's front page and everyone's doing that. And everyone's got the capitalization now and certain... And it's always, you know, the adjectives, the hyperbole. And all of that works. And, I, you know, I have no input in it because I... I wouldn't know what the fuck I'm doing. I mean, you know, I, for years, used to just put content out on my channel and just call it like, this is a, you know... <laughs> Interview <laughs> with Adam Fitch. Yeah, yeah, screen clip. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, yeah. and, and obviously that's terrible because who's, who's stream, what's, you know, clip of what, what's the context? But I just viewed it as a place to curate and store my content yes you know and i don't really care if i have a million youtube followers or 10 it's like you can monetize the million a lot better though to be fair yeah true but then again i don't even do anything really for monetization on youtube My, my twitch is actually a better vehicle um i suppose this is a good we can we can branch off actually and talk a little bit about this brand building when you're uh, a journalist, uh, because I think this is one thing that basically a lot of journalists don't do. Mm-hmm. They they go they they use the publication as their standard, and they don't build something for themselves. And it's like, listen, if you ever want to know what you should be in esports, if you're covering a beat, Fabrizio Romano, that's your boy. That's who mm-hmm. you should be. Uh, you know, he's got a Twitch. He puts his own shit out. Millions of followers, absolutely huge. Never gets a story wrong. If he I think he's got his it, own catchphrase, hasn't he, as well? Like, what? here we go. I think yeah, he says, like, here we go. every tweet or some shit. Yeah, like, yeah. He's, he's better than most. And so, he's producing good work. So, so yeah, so I want to ask about you and, mm. and, and, and doing that and, and whether you found that difficult, whether you've even attempted to do it. I, I have attempted it where mm. I had the uniform Twitter banner and the YouTube link, and then you go to the YouTube, and like, like I had like a couple of shows, which I say shows, they're not fucking shows, they were just a recording of a Discord conversation, effectively, mm. um, where the, the sole purpose of it, well, I'd say the predominant purpose of it was like, okay, you need to like get your face out there more, because like people care about what you have to say when you're reporting, or when you've got a scoop, but like outside of that, they don't give a shit because why do they have to give a shit? So you have to give them a reason. So like, okay, here, I'm a personable person. I'm funny. I'm down to earth, whatever. Um, I also have opinions which exist outside of my reports, like, and maybe you're like them. So like, obviously it's an exercise in, in getting my face out there. Those didn't last long because I didn't give a shit about what I was doing realistically. Um, and you won't believe this, but you definitely will. Like, I'm going to try it again soon when I leave DeSerto because I understand, yeah. like, the, the thing is, like, my work and I guess my tweets and such over the years, like, 
was enough to land me a job at the biggest publication in the industry without having to apply. They reached out to me. So yeah. like, I know on a certain level, like I, I wouldn't say I built a brand, but I'd say I built a reputation, which is like, I, I guess like an industry. Yeah, they're, they're not the same <laughs> thing. And I, 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 I couldn't tell you which one is better. It's probably reputation, honestly. Probably. I'd say so. Yeah. I, th- I think reputation on a business point of view, and then I guess just like casually, like having a really solid brand might mm. help. So maybe they're on two different kind of, they exist on different planes almost, uh, as well as coexisting. But uh, so I, I've never really gone all out. Like I've had a website where I linked all my socials and said, mm. this is who I am, all this shit, like done the most basic stuff, but I've, I've never gone, I've never gone like full, I'm a personality. And Part of me doesn't want that because some days I can't even muster up the courage to, or, or not the courage, but the fucking want to tweet. Never mind, like, record with someone vaguely interesting uh, for an hour and a half and then, like, come up with a thumbnail myself because I'm too poor to, like, pay someone to do it. And then try and... I don't want to play the bullshit games. That's what it is. Like, on on Twitter, if you like, George Geddes, like, fair play to him, he's been banging out scoops, but, like, the fucking shitey tweets is insane. It's just, it's just absolute memes of bollocks. And now he's gone on a tendency, he's got a tendency to meme about getting bitches. So he's replying to like the official Valorant Twitter account saying, like, yeah, this patch is cool, but you've got no bitches. Get some bitches. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I can't play that game. And I can't play the YouTube algorithm <laughs> algorithm game where I'm doing no, the faces I tell you, and I've got I, I, I hate myself. that shit. I, I always have I, I I hate that, you know, the let's get this bread. Because the last thing we need, by the way is for streamer culture to sort of invade journalism the yes. way it's invaded yeah. esports. You need like, a clean please, cut, yeah. I think. Yeah, please, no. It's like, it's great to have your brand and it's great to have your platform. And it's great that Fabrizio Romano literally comes on stream and says, these are the stories I've been working on today. Blah, blah, blah. Here's like an hour digest of what I'm doing, peace. And he can monetize that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that that's like, that is the model that everyone should be really paying attention to if you want to be an independent journalist these days. But, you know, yeah, I agree. I mean, like, we've talked about it on By the Numbers. I'm just like, I love George. You know, he's a little cute little cherub mm-hmm. of esports joy, you know. So, like, and I look, I can't help but look at esports journalists as essentially all of my, like, bastard children on Sunday. Right. Right. But yeah, I can't do that. I can't wake up and fucking tweet like, "Have you got any bitches?" or "What's going on today?" <laughs> or "Pineapple on pizza?" question mark And like, just to get yeah. engagement, like, I, 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 it makes me nauseous. It's like because I think like we value. I, 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 I'll speak for myself. Like, I get mm. my my self esteem from doing good work. Yeah, Some people same. get lost in the sauce and mm. get it by chasing like the cheap dopamine hits of like, okay, okay Numbers another K, mm-hmm. another 1,000 followers, or this tweet did 5K likes, <laughs> or, or this tweet was seen Bang by the, the voice actor of Phoenix. <laughs> this is fucking sick, mate. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, that shit doesn't entertain me at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and it doesn't provide any sort of satisfaction. So yeah, but like, I remember when George like, couldn't get a press pass to a CDL event or like a, a CW yeah. event back in the day. Like I met up with him there. Like me and him had a falling out but before that. He was coming to me for advice. So I'm going to say I was his first ever mentor. Um, I'm going to say that he would never, I don't think it admit it at this point, but yeah, like I was a cunt to him in the end. Cause he, he was being a fucking idiot in my mind. Um, and he knows that very much, <laughs> but like, it's cool to see where he's come. But yeah. also like the thing is, he's just gone for a break of break of himself. So he in fact has no bitches. So I think he's projecting his lack of bitch, like his lack of bitch upon other people. And it's just like, I, I think he's got a little bit like too number orientated. And it's like, he's like, there was... he wants a report tonight. And it's like, well, put the fucking report out. Don't bait a fucking report. What is this now? Like a fashion drop. Yeah. Is he the hundred yeah. thieves of journalism? Yeah, it's not merch. Yeah. I, oh, I, God. Don't, I don't get that, it. I'm never like, use that phrase again. Hundred thieves of journalism is terrifying. <laughs> Nearly just shit myself after you've That's just the said first that. time I've ever said like a unique phrase in my life. I think I've coined that. <laughs> yeah, and it's don't, the last time please. it'll be used as well. Thank so you. February. Thank you. Uh no, I mean, look, there, there was um just on that point, and this is like totally trivial and we're just dunking on someone, but whatever the fuck. It's a it's a podcast, right? So whatever. Uh there was a there was a famous player in back in the Counter-Strike Saw scene back in the day, one of the first scenes I really cut my teeth on. Right. And you could identify the exact moment he lost his virginity because <laughs> 
because he started using the word virgin as an insult oh, okay. to everybody yeah. else. It, yeah. it just overnight, you just became, shut the fuck up, virgin. You're a virgin. What a virgin. Oh, my God, look at this virgin. And you're like, oh, yeah, you've got laid finally. Like, well done. You know, it's like, so I'm always. no idea where that was Because I, 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 I always, linguistically, I always look at that stuff and it's like, I think when some people try and project strength, sometimes they project insecurity. Right. So you know what yeah, I mean? Okay. Yeah. Cause, so if I, because their like, flip sides are the same coin, essentially. If I call you baldy all the time and stuff, when I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, and, you, and you've got a hat on, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, yeah. nice hair, dickhead. Like, if I'm talking yeah. about everyone's hair, like maybe yeah, yeah it's because like, I, I'm follically challenged and I myself can't grow any. I'm mad insecure about it. Yeah. Maybe so, but uh, I do need to get some pictures according to George. So I'll, I'll get on that. I'm I just sure want to make sure. I'm not trying to dunk on him. I do like. Now he's moved to Dot. He's got like investigative journalists in his bio. And that I mean, to be fair, they they uh, cooked him big time at Upcomer. I think. I mean, well, I mean, yeah. he should be well, one he of the. Got, f- he got his uh, fancy rings and and chains and stuff that he wears over his turtleneck now. So he, he's made his pee from from Upcomer, and it's like it's time to move on and do some good work now. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, I think uh, he is. So, you know how I feel about roster moves, uh, but, you know, it's the best place to start investigative journalism. It's sort yeah. of investigative. Uh, it's a very light level. And once you get a reputation as a leaker, you'll never need uh, to to sort of, uh, d- you'll it, it, it just gets easier and easier with each sort of passing, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know. Well, I, I've done two roster move things in my life and that was this year mm. and it was in the space of a week because like i momentarily cared about like i had a chip on my shoulder for a second about like okay let me remind you to sir oh, that i can do this shit if i need to yeah. uh because it's as i say just going up against a bunch of stuff and um so it was g2 signing uh their their all women valorant roster giuliano and such like big fucking story and then XL signing a former FIFA World Champion. That got no traction whatsoever. But in my mind, FIFA World Champion, eh, it's all right. So, but like the, the breadth of that like is, is ridiculous. So in my mind, like if I what if I picked a game and I want I wouldn't pick League of Legends, but if I picked a fucking good game, like <laughs> that I actually enjoyed or something like that, you know, like I reckon I could like climb to the top decently easy. Maybe it's I'm trying to shit to myself and I've too much self-belief, but like I don't I don't see it as like hard. So yeah. like I've never really gone for it except for that yeah. one week where I'm like, right, you fuck you, to say, oh, I'll show you. I mean, for me, right, and you've touched on something that I've kind of alluded to when I've been mm-hmm. talking about it on stream. Uh, I talked about it when I was doing an esports awards breakdown, right? And that is one of the things that people don't really appreciate is there is like a lot of drama between journalists in the scene. Oh yeah, I I, I probably yeah. would say. Uh, as a group, because I, I think to do the job, you have to be like c- crazy on some level. Like, uh, yeah. d- dysfunctional is probably a better word because it's a dysfunctional life. Mm-hmm. It's you're, you, you, as we said, you're in over investing time and effort into something for not much reward, not financial. And the only real payoff is the sort of pride of a job well done. Yes, yes. That's like a very bizarre, fucked up mindset. You know, it's like you'll see that a lot in athletes, for example. Not that I'm saying journalists are athletic in any way, shape or form, but it's that drive for its own reward uh, that is like, it, that's not how most people live their lives. And as no. a result, you end up being like very socially awkward, under socialized in some areas maybe hyper aggressive or weird and as a result you know it's one area where it blows my mind sometimes like the arguments and the stories i hear like of like journalistic friction it's mm-hmm. crazy right yeah well well firstly i pride myself on being like one of the most normal people in the industry is that I've is that all, the I've, thing you're going I've for? always i've always said it like I, I may be in a, an industry full of fucking nerds, but I'm not one of them. It's always how I've seen myself. So, yes, I kind of see myself as above most people in esports in that sense. Right. Uh, I've been completely transparent. And, yeah, I, as, you, as you say, we are all a bit fucked up, right? Uh, but it's also, like, it's one of the only jobs, it's the only job I can think of where, like, you could put a lot of hours into it and get nothing. Like, no, nothing gets put out in the yeah. public. So, like, it doesn't seem like you're doing anything. It's one of the only jobs where, like, I don't know, if I, like, bake, I'm a baker. If I bake a lot of bread, there's going to be a lot of bread to sell. You know what I mean? If I'm on, if I'm a fucking e girl, if I take loads of pictures of me tits and feet, they're getting put on OnlyFans. Like uh, journalism, like I can look into a 
a company for a week and like need confirmation on one last thing, but can't quite get it. And therefore I'm not 100% on it. I'm 99.9. It's like that shit can't, can't go out there. And there's nothing to prove really or nothing to say I've done that work. You yeah. know, it's like, so I, that, that can fuck you up. I think if you're not prepared for it um, and maybe a nugget of information from a story that don't get out may help you in the future or connect you with someone that can help you. You never know. But uh, yeah, it is, it, there's that layer as well. I can't think of another job where that really happens. Uh, I don't know, unless you're like a gambler or something. I don't know. You gamble yeah. forever and nothing ever comes, comes yeah. through, you know? I, I mean, um, maybe, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's tough. It's tough in that sense, you know? But yeah, the, the inter, like the personal beef between people uh, who work in esports journalism is mad as well. Thankfully, I, I'm not in any journalism clique whatsoever. I've been on my own island, even within the company I work in for like 14 months now. Yeah. So I, I exist like as a group of one. Um, mm. So I don't get too pissed off <laughs> with the people, but like e- even like the, the Joker Wolf and Kevin hit thing post the awards, like weird, um, right? Yeah. And the timing of it didn't look good for Jay to Jacob to become completely honest, because like yeah. the tweet went out again, Kevin journalist of the year. And then like five minutes later, it was like, Oh, he said something weird about my girlfriend. It was just a very weird time for it. it yeah. I mean, it I it, it seemed to be night. predicated on an understand a misunderstanding as well. Like, yes, you know, yeah. which, which, is never great uh, because obviously, you know, when you're a journalist, accuracy is, you know, sort of paramount and even See. like <laughs> trivial mistakes can chip away at that reputation. And, and, you know, you say something publicly and then another public figure comes in and says, I was there and that's not quite what happened. And it's like, you end up in this weird realm. So, I mean, I just kept out of that. I know them both, like them both, work with them both. Uh, but that just seems to be like indicative of the kind of like weird little rivalries and and, dis- and dislikes that pop up in the journalism sphere. Do do you think it's it's just ego? Because like realistically, if you think someone's like a legit journalist, let's say like someone who you know is like upholding really high standards and, mm. and really cares about the truth above all else, like surely you'd have like a ridiculous amount of respect for them. Like if I, if I look at like someone like Kevin, me and him have had like disagreements in the past, but I've never said his work shit. Cause like, yeah, he's yeah. Doing good stuff. Like Jacob, like I've never had a falling out with him, but we're not great mates either. We're just like, we're colleagues. I'd say, even though we've never worked together. Yeah. Um, but like he's, he's done some great investigative work. It's like, I respect that. I don't, I don't, maybe if I've like published a story before Jacob, I'd be like, Oh fucking hell, I beat him on that one in my own mind, but I'm not like creating some sort of competition. I, I don't really see it that way too much. So I don't understand where the, the pettiness comes from. Uh, yeah, I mean it's it so historically there it sort of made sense because like you know, me and Thorin met by us having like a bit of a rivalry. Okay. He denigrated my work publicly. I denigrated him and his work publicly. Okay. Uh Slasher <laughs> was in that too. Um, you know, and we and we've all denigrated each other and come back and forth and and but there was a sense at that time that you know and oh I did the same with Carmack as well back when he used to be a journalist, um, you know, so it, it, there was a time when you had to the only journalist that was going to get any attention and by extension money was the best one. Okay. Because the industry oh, then, yeah. was so small. So you did have to fucking go out there and plant your flag, you mm-hmm. know. And then when people came at you, you had to hold your corner. Uh, and, and and so, but, you know, we moved on from that, like, by 2011, you know, 2012. That was over. You didn't need to do that anymore. But some of us still did because we were just cunts at heart, I guess. Uh, like, <laughs> you know, I make no bones about that. Uh, but but now, yeah, it's weird. It does seem to be sort of predicated on ego a lot. And it's really bizarre because, like, the thing that always got me, you can call me a fat piece of shit, you can call me bald, call me a fucking loser, you know, like, God, Lord knows, I get called right wing all the time, even though I don't think I hold a single right wing opinion um mm-hmm. in my mind and uh you know you can you can do all that and it's frustrating and it's annoying and it's irritating but it's just the daily day to day of abuse when yeah. you start attacking my work when you start exactly. saying i'm a liar when you start saying a report is inaccurate when you start saying you know you're just a fucking blogger and a clickbait artist and you know as if i've never contributed now i'm pissed off now you've got my mm-hmm. full fucking attention and I think it's what that tells me is I 
identify more as a journalist than I identify more as Richard Lewis. I get you. You know, I get you entirely. And that's like, I, I was literally so like the, the next job that I'm taking on, I'm like, it's not a publication and there's content involved. And it is kind of, I'm still going to be operating with the same standards and such. So like, in my mind, it is still journalism, but it's a step away, like one foot out in a sense, which I don't like towing that line. So I need to figure mm. out how I communicate it. But um, like, I, I was literally speaking about this with a close friend like yesterday, like my identity is entirely tied to my profession, which I don't think is a good thing in many. Oh, like, mega if, unhealthy, yeah. As a person, it's not good, but like in your job, it fucking helps. Like, you, you know where you stand, like everything's clearly defined. But yeah, as a person, it's like, well, it's fucked. So now that I'm like, somewhat switching or like just readjusting what I do and where I do it. Cause I don't believe I, I I don't have much faith in publications anymore. I don't want to work for one. I don't want to be involved in, in the bullshit games there. Mm. Uh, I, I'm like having to like reconcile with who I am, what I do and, and does it matter if everything's so defined and, and everything else, you know, like I, having to really work on that kind of identity. So I, I can, I fully relate to, um, I, I care more about, I have cared and still do more about being a journalist than I do about who I am outside of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, so, so you think everyone would be really supportive of that. If everyone's got that same agreement and everyone's on that same path, like Kevin and Jacob, like I, I think they're both dedicated journalists and I think they're both good people. So I, I don't really understand how something like that gets public. I understand how mis, mis like understandings can happen, but like yeah. how that gets to the point where it's public and, and there's also yeah, a yeah. bunch of other beef and stuff, of course, like, uh, it seems to be a lot of clicks in like well, you know you're, you've already American talked about like yeah, yeah you and George and then obviously yeah you know, apart I've, from that I haven't had anything I've, I've been alright and it's only little George and he ain't got any bitches so I'm fine you know? <laughs> <laughs> but like you've gone up against like Slasher and Thorin and I guess others as well in, who I probably haven't heard of because they've been and gone I mean yeah that too but also I mean dude like uh, you know little you know journalists like you know have have a pop at me some work at publications that I've essentially Essentially, given the credibility to right. by you know because I worked there prior and I published like massive esports stories there again people forget shit that I did like you know it's like um all you you know like like there's a narrative that crops up from time to time generally from people who got into esports in 2019 uh and they say like oh you know richard lewis uh he published one story it was the i by power story yeah and, exactly uh, yeah. yeah and he never and, <clears throat> and he just i've ridden on the coattails as if that would be viable for a journalist he's just ridden on the coattails of that story for like six years of course you can't ride on the coattails of one story even a huge story it just it just doesn't work like that um but you know like I did things in League of Legends that were like unprecedented at the time, like, uh, you know, where uh, a player gets threatened by a manager and they're threatening to take his mother's house away because she's a co-signatory on a contract. And I get a recording of that, of the oh, threat, man. and publish a recording of that publicly. And then that manager gets a lifetime ban from ever manage managing in like LCS ever again. And it's like, I did that. You know, that's mm -hmm. a massive story. That's that's industry changing. Um. And, and, you know, the, the website that publishes a story like that grows and grows and grows. And then when journalists are working there years later, even when I'm not, it's like, I don't know, like lashing out at me because of your fucked up warped perception about who I am as a person, which you don't know. We've never met each other. Yeah. We've never worked together. I always just think like, that's like me when I started being a bit a little gremlin, lashing out at people with huge followings, hoping I'd catch some of the haters on you know, on my Twitter account, basically. Mm -hmm. I, I get you, yeah. I, I, a lot of it, I think, is a symptom of social media as well. Like, oh, because yeah. you, like, you can see someone's tweets, now it means you know who they are as a 3D being and you understand where they stand on things. Uh, which, Nonsense, of course. Yeah, which I, I, I took an issue with that when everyone was going mad at Semler, whether you think he did right or wrong, like trying to say, like, you know exactly who he is as a person off of, like, four tweets is a bit fucking mental to me, but like now we're very quick to assign something to them, aren't we? They're either on the good side or the bad side. Uh, and I, I don't like that at all. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, I haven't seen too much of that in like the actual journalism side yet. And, and as I say, because I stay away from a lot of it. So I actually probably know fucking a tenth of what you do that's happened over the past four years. Um, because like, you're Richard Lewis, people will come to you. Like, I like, you know, I mean, I bet your DMs it's just fucking flooded constantly with information you haven't asked for, you're not looking into whatever. Yeah. Like, 
like for the first like two and, and, and just H I to, I, in yes. Portuguese. Uh, oh yes, <laughs> like I had to like go for like basically every bit of information that I got for like the first two half years or something out like because like why would someone come to you if you haven't like built the name and reputation and stuff, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I've I've not really had to deal with any of that myself besides a, a spat with George. Uh, and that's just basically because I was telling him he can't spell and he was saying, no, I can spell. And I said, well, the word's wrong. And it escalated <laughs> from there. And he was at like half You can't get precious about spelling errors. He pissed me off so much over the course of a couple of weeks. It was like 1.30 in the morning. Mm. Um, was in a call. He was like, have a look over, over this for me. And I was trying to tell him, no, this is fucked up and you've done this wrong. You could work that better, blah, blah, blah. So I was just trying, genuinely trying to help and they didn't go well. So I lost my shit. When I, like, I have not shouted that loud in my life to this day still. Um, uh, my somehow my neighbors didn't come knock on my door and tell me what the fuck have you been like attempt someone attempt to murder you or something because it sounded ridiculous um you know but yeah apart from that one little thing with uh with george it's, it's been pretty sound I, I try and stay away from it because like it's not going to benefit me at all to be around that bullshit. how do you feel about awards in I hate general them. Okay. Uh, no, no, I uh, no. Um, because you've been nominated for esports journalist of the year, right? Yeah, I got 2019 I, nominee. The thing is, my first year reporting, I got I was a finalist at the UK esports awards, lol. Hmm. But like, I was a finalist there. Second year, I won it. Next year, I was a finalist again. But also, I got the nod for esports award, uh, esports awards finalist, um, like top eight or top ten or whatever it is there. Um, I don't. I, I, it doesn't really do anything for me, and I, I don't know why. Because like. I guess I in the past I used to like reduce the work I'd done and the skills I'd I'd kind of accrued and and built up right so I'd be like well everyone can do this in my mind like nothing I did was special or like was a product of hard work and I've changed that over time now yeah. so I can kind of acknowledge a compliment or like oh yeah maybe I am pretty fucking good at that but like everything was so simple in my mind because I I'm myself and I've done that you know yeah. so yeah is is a probably a a rather negative thing where I, I couldn't really accept criticism. I mean, yeah, sorry, I yeah. mean, I mean the opposite. Fucking compliments. Yeah. Like, yeah. Even my dad would be like, oh, "I'm proud of you, mate. Like you pivoted your career, and now you're fucking getting um, an award in journalism, mm. which you didn't get trained for. You went from digital marketing for a local fucking e-commerce store to being a, a award-winning journalist." And I'm like, "Yeah, but it's a shit award show, and it's only UK, and there's not many people in the UK who do good journalism." I just reduce it to where it was nothing. You know, so uh, people like, do that. To, to pe- people do the opposite to me. Uh, okay. You know, if I ever dare say that I'm an award winning journalist, they go, yeah, but it's just esports awards. And it's like, well, yeah. OK, yeah, that's the field I work in. What more? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, You're not going to win sports personality of the year. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like it's only the Nobel Prize for literature. You know like, yeah. what? Uh, like, yeah, you know, it's, it's one of the strange. you know, it's the highest recognition we got. I'm a lifetime yeah. achievement award recipient, which, by the way, mm-hmm. I don't even like giving out lifetime achievement awards when people are still active. But whatever, I'll, I'll take it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's really weird. People like just say that to me. And it's like that. now I, I used to be like you. I used to be like, you know, very. Uh, compliment averse let's say but now I, I love rubbing that in people's faces because i know it bothers them me being able to say that i've got those awards and achieved all those things i know it bothers them way fucking more that i get to say that than it bothers than it bothers me that they get to say those awards don't count i get you you know what yeah, i mean that, so I, and kinda, I, I like kinda rubbing to people's get noses. Other people instead of like to build yourself up Personally. Yeah, exactly. Because you know what you realize is when people hate you, uh, it's not be- and it's predicated on Twitter. It's not real. None of it's mm-hmm. real. They don't know me. They're never going to meet me. We're never even going to occupy the same fucking zip code. You have created an avatar of me in your mind. It's basically like a type of parasocial relationship. Yes. yes. You've created an avatar of me in your mind and you despise that avatar. And there is nothing, there is no presentation of objective reality that will take that away from you because you need that in your life. You need that avatar. It's a lot of people did it with Trump. You know, that's obviously the big one. 
the big example. Um, not that I want to ever compare myself to that guy, but you know what? But but it's what people do on social media all of the time. And, you know, and I, I've read things about myself where they go like, "Oh, Richard Lewis, God, yeah, he's like he weighs three hundred and fifty pounds," and it's like, dude, I, uh, you know, I, I, I at my heaviest I was two fifty, so you're a hundred pounds out. Um, but because they see obesity as something disgusting and vile, they want to project that on me. Not saying I'm not obese, by the way. Clinically, that's absolutely spot on. Uh, but, you know, they, they they always have to take it further. They always have to add more. You know, mm-hmm. they can't just let it stand for itself. And, you know, he's a racist. Like, there's no evidence of this. He's, yeah. he's you know, I read that I'm homophobic. Like, I'm in the alphabet club, you know? It's like, it's it's madness. It's a type of madness. You realise it's a problem with them and not with yourself, so it's just like, fuck it. Yeah, like, and, and so what I like doing is when they come to me and go, you, you know, they think they're hurting me by going, yeah, you're never going to achieve anything. It's like, all right, let's take, all right, okay, here's the things I achieved. Grew up mm-hmm. unbelievably poor and worked myself to a point where I'm recognized as the best in my field and got onto American television on mm-hmm. h- highest subscribed cable news show. One of the first ever endemic esports people to work on television. Uh, and I built a great product over there. Uh, what the fuck have you done? And, you know, Sweet, it's so, tweeted at you. <laughs> yeah. And it's some cunt, you know, like who's like got a picture of them in a footlocker outfit, like suck my nuts. You know, it's mm-hmm. just like, you know, that's not to be disparaging about retail. I started there. That's why I get to fucking tell you, you don't get to talk to me because I've been where you've been and I worked my way out. And by the way, if you're working class, the concept of climbing the ladder and getting out is like, it, it's, it's core to your identity is who yeah. you are. You yeah, know? exactly. Like, I like, part of me when i was like thinking about changing jobs so i'm like from the north of england like a place called scunthorpe where like you yep. couldn't put in the gun in scunthorpe yeah, like, you say. couldn't you couldn't put that you're from scunthorpe <laughs> in your location on xbox you it, like, they won't allow it yeah. that's cunt in there right <laughs> yeah. so like being a cunt is called to my identity but also like trying to like not be poor as fucking a steel town mm. effectively so like i was thinking like right i've got two options here i can either try and cash in on my reputation somewhat and like yeah. try and get a bit of like more than what I've, my family have ever seen for sure, which by the way would be literally like 50k. Like, yeah. I don't think anyone in my family has ever had more than 50k, like, probably more, probably 40 is the tops, you know, it's, it's nothing really in the grand scheme of things. Or like, I can like try and double down and keep doing good work, keep um, I, building my reputation, also try and brand myself better and push, do fight, I, I guess, like go along with the necessary evils that come with like being someone on the internet. If yeah. You're trying to monetize on the internet uh, independently at some point. So like I ended up taking the latter option, uh, money will have to wait. I'm getting paid the same amount at my new job as I am in my old job. You know, like I, d- I didn't try and push for any more. Uh, and it, 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 but like I, c- I can hundred percent relate where it's like, I, all I want is to be able to get to the point where it's like, if someone in my family needs a few hundred quid to help them, I can help them and it's not going to be an issue to me. Stuff like that. Or it's like, oh, I want to go on a holiday. I don't have to save up for six months to go. Because like, like, I remember back in the day, a bit of a silly story, but like when laptops were pretty new, my parents saved up £1,500 so we could go um, go abroad or whatever, right? But my mum was like, oh, I need this laptop for work. And that was 1500 quid. So like they'd saved up for fucking ages, but instead we get the shitty slow laptop within two years, it was outdated. Mm. So we didn't have a holiday. I went abroad twice in my life until I ended up going to LAN events and getting paid to go there, you know? Yeah. So like, I, I fully, like fully recognize like the, the come up and like climbing the ladder is fucking, it's, it's core. It's, it's everything to be fair. And it probably like subconsciously fucks with me quite a bit. Uh, so that's maybe why I'm staying in esports somewhat as well. I know it, but like also I'm an established person here now. Uh, I think it'd be easier to climb the ladder in esports if I so wish. I'd probably have to side with some bullshits. Bullshitters, sorry, I can't speak. But um, like I could do that. It'd be easier than if I go to a different industry now and try and establish mm. myself there. I've got like a four year head start. So like if I ever want to become a fucking absolute dickhead with no morals and stuff, probably esports all- is going to be very easy to do that in esports. It's always tempting. Uh, I imagine. I bet you've had some fucking offers, <laughs> bro. Fucking crazy. Think about the money when well, it's been so easy to sell out at some point. And I mean, you know, like the the thing that in the thing that is the 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 pernicious dark thinking that you have to kind of watch out for is uh, it's because 
if you do something for sort of like the knowledge of a job well done, or you do it for validation of knowing that I am helping the scene, and then yes. the scene is saying, yeah, fuck you, kill fuck yourself. You, <laughs> you, you. you know, yeah. it's like, it becomes very easy to say, they treat me like I'm a sellout. They treat me like I'm corrupt. Why don't I just, yeah, why don't I just go and become those things? And so, you know, yeah, that's, trust me, the, the, the money, uh, you know, because I, I didn't even have sponsors up until recently. I was always worried about mm. how that would impact. Like, obviously, the sponsors I got now are fucking, you know, great and all above board companies. And I made a point of only working with companies like that, that I can vet and look into and know that they've got like an unbelievable reputation. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, for example, I had the fucking Raid Shadow Legends offer. You know, did they offer to put you in the game like they did with Simple? No, although I do look like an orc, so it would have been pretty easy for them. Um, but yeah, you know, so I had that offer and I checked in with my community. I checked in with my Discord and said, how do we feel about this? And they're like, nah, fuck that. Mm-hmm. It's shady. It's bullshit. It's passe. It's, bad. it's not to knock anyone who takes that money, though, because, you know, we all got to eat. But mm-hmm. for me, you know, I've, I've tried to walk a pretty clear line on a lot of things. But dude, though, back in the heyday when the shady betting companies were popping off, I could have, I could have cleaned up. I could have been retired, you know. Mm-hmm. But but you you won't be able to like look at yourself in the mirror and think like oh. yeah. But then you put <laughs> the point is like maybe that's true on year one, year two, year three of being a piece mm-hmm. of shit. I'm sure it gets easier over time. Ten years down the road, <laughs> you're just like fuck it. I love looking at myself in the mirror now. I bought myself yeah. a tummy tuck with the illegal fucking money I got. <laughs> yeah. You pretty yeah. You 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 probably somehow like managed to convince yourself that what you're doing is completely fine. Like, yeah. so, like I don't, and that, that scares the fuck out of me to be fair. Yeah. Like the thinking of like becoming like what you absolutely despise and you like know to be evil <laughs> at this point, like when you grow up, like, so I, I, I don't know, like, though I say like the idea of cashing out, like my version of cashing out is getting a little bit of dosh. Like mm. that is alluring, but like nowhere near enough. Like, it, like that wouldn't satisfy me as much as like creating good work. And like, now I'm like joining a, a company where like, I know I can have like a tangible impact on the industry. Uh, Cause I'm still naive enough to think like I can help it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like I think yeah. there's comes a certain point where it's like, well, it's fucking doomed. I'm almost there, but like, this is maybe like my last effort before I think like, no matter what I say, what I do, it's going to go the way it's going to go. So like, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping like that works out. Uh, and, and, and I feel like a sense of like, okay, I am doing something good here. And like, we get like the people because well, I'm going to join hit markers. So, like the people that are coming into the industry or changing jobs are like good people. But then I remember as like a lot of folk think liking video games and wanking to tracer is a fucking qualification for esports. You know what I mean? Like they feel like entitled to join the industry because they love watching Overwatch League or Dota yeah. or whatever. It's like fuck me. Like I hope <laughs> if that's the new, the crop of people coming in, then we are pretty fucking doomed. To be fair. So maybe we should have had the esports certification institute come in and everyone. <laughs> God, and we should have used that. that, you know. Forgot about that. Um, well, look, let's talk about because you know we're we're coming up to time anyway, so it's oh, a good little segue. Okay. Oh, that's gone quick. Flies by, right? Mm. Um, you obviously are going to be leaving Deserto, uh, which uh, is like I say, I think it's a, a shame. Um, obviously, I, I read your stuff, uh, you know, and uh, I think the niche you occupy is like real important in the industry. If people actually legitimately give a shit, you know, yes. I'd say the work you put out on basically, you know, kind of uh, esports observer, uh, or basically if you actually care about all of the pieces on the board and all of the money that's moving those pieces, yep. that the, you and esports observer are the two uh, places to go. But, um, <laughs> good, good. I'm glad. Um, so hit marker, uh, hit marker for those who don't know, it's like essentially a, a recruitment website, it's a jobs website. So, and they don't have a history of sort of creating content. So how the fuck do you go over there to be like a head of content dude when yeah. content's a relatively new thing for them anyway? Yeah. I mean, like, so they've, they've doubled like videos where like, I, th- I think I've done a couple for them before. It's like, how did you get into journalism? Blah, blah, blah. But like, like so educational content as opposed to anything else like so it's i haven't started yet so i can't say like what my day-to-day looks like but Mm. effectively i've known them since they started and it was around the time i started i know they're really good people and i think they're positioned to well they're at a pivotal point because they're the place like there's no other 
what company competing with them at this point. So it's either who you know or you see it on LinkedIn or you, you're going to see it on Hitmarker, right, uh, for, for the most part at least. So I think they're at a real pivotal point and obviously getting good people into the industry and also getting them to join the good companies is um, that's a real like pivotal point. I think it's a point of impact for me. So I think content-wise... I can't say like specifics in terms of like, okay, I'll do this kind of written content or this kind of video content, though I can tell you they want me to do podcasts and videos and shit. How that materializes, I don't know yet. Uh, In my mind, uh, I'll be speaking with like John Robinson from 100 Thieves and getting like real technical information out of him instead of just like, oh, so like, how's it been at 100 Thieves? Like, you know what I mean? Like I want to create like actual tangible shit. Um, But the way I see it and... I don't know if they'd like me saying this, but I think I'll kind of be the like online face and voice of them. It's how I see it. Maybe a bit egotistical that, but like I'm the first person to join in that kind of role. Yeah, they yeah. To do podcast. They want historic me to do for what they do. Of, yeah. So, um, like they've got they've just hired a former uh, social media manager from Excel, Nathan Edmonds, who's joining like head of community and marketing or whatever. So like he's going to be going to all the bullshit conferences that I cannot fucking stand. Um, so he'll be the yeah. offline face or whatever, like, you know. What I mean, he'll go and mentor people physically. I'll do it in the online realm where I don't have to talk with them. They can just watch me and, mm. and listen to me. Um, so, so effectively, I, I I want to make sure that I am explaining the industry well. So something I wanted to do when I joined Deserto was really break down the business of esports or like make the industry very transparent. I uh, couldn't really do that. Um, just cause it's just the job was, wasn't that job. Whereas now um, I'm in control of what I publish and what I write. And I, I know writing will be a big part of it. So uh, I can still do investigative work if I want to uh, like everything's up to me. And I know it's not a publication, so I'm very wary of this. Um, I've spoken to them and we're willing to put like standards and ethics and, and how we operate on the website transparently where people can see it. I'm going to assure people where I'm putting my reputation on the line that I'm still going to operate the way I, I always have. Um, so when I do report, like, which I, I, I'm pretty sure I will, there'll probably be some original report. Well, there will be some original reporting in there. Like it's, it's going to be the same. It always has been. It's just a different website. You go to read it. Uh, so in terms of like people who care to read my stuff and I find like, I don't have the quantity of followers, but I have quality. Like it's people within the industry that tend to read my stuff as a rule. Yeah. Um, so when like, they know that it's still me still operating the way I always have, but it's a new home and also it's it's a place where I, I can operate without needing to hit a certain amount of views or write a certain amount of pieces a day or, you know, all the necessary evils that come along with like a, a media company and a, and a publication right now. There's a lot of bullshit there, which we've, we've mentioned. You have to do the TikTok stuff to afford the esports stuff. These aren't a publication. They don't monetize that way, like via ads. So like our subscriptions, if, you, mm-hmm. if you're looking at the athletic or something. So like I kind of operate outside of all the bullshit, hopefully. On my own yeah. little island again at Hitmarker, and I'll figure out as it as it goes along. But effectively, uh, I I want to make sure that shit companies are called out uh, because look, I think Hitmarker a lot of their dosh comes from elsewhere. Like in terms of, like, I think it's consumer focused more so than company focused. Could be wrong on that. I haven't looked, but I think that's the case. And like they owe these companies nothing. So like if there's a shit company, I don't think they want to be pointing potential candidates and, and employees to bad companies. Um, how how they decide on that, I, I don't necessarily agree with with a, a, a move they did recently where they removed all Activision Blizzard jobs off of the website. I don't know if I agree with that. I think, how about if we had a news feed on the major companies' um, pages on Hitmarker where people could go in and see what's happened recently and make their own mind up? Like, yeah, I think, I, I think, I think when you think like about that, it that way, it's yeah, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Because obviously, you know, you've got that recruitment aspect to it and people are going out and getting jobs. And sometimes, and this has been a problem in the industry for as long as I've been in it, um, you know, people naively take these jobs, take these roles at companies that are that are either fly by night or they're not sensible with their cash or they're complete scams to begin with. And, mm-hmm. you know, you end up completely out of pocket or fucked over on the deal. I mean, shit, I feel like in 2014 and 2013, I, I want to say that probably made up like 25, 30% of all the types of story I published. Right. So. So yeah, having it having it adjacent, I would say, yeah, is that's very something important. I, like I want to pitch those kind of ideas to them. I've I've got a bunch of things where it's probably outside of my remit as like a content guy there. Where, but I, I genuinely think like 
people can make their own minds up. Like if they're stupid enough to apply for a company that's fuck it, fucking over everyone, then I'm sorry, but like that's their fault. Uh, mm. I, I just don't like necessarily like the idea of playing god with what's available too much uh kind of like uh, i don't know if you'd say it's similar to banning like trump and such on twitter where they, be, they go from being a platform to an editorial body where they're deciding who's good enough and what the standards are and now you have to meet that always uh I, it's like i have ideas on that front uh yeah. yeah so i think major companies if you have a news feed for them whether it's myself written or it's fucking google embed whatever it may be uh things like that um, where I can have a tangible impact, uh, but I also want to report without being a Jake Lucky or a Travis Gafford, where they want the perks of reporting and being a journalist without the responsibilities of being a journalist. Yeah. I am anti them. Yeah, like, for sure. I will take all of the bullshit that comes along with it as long as I get to do the good work, as well, like which has always been the case, you know? So like, I see myself as like, I'm still doing what I'm doing. It's just outside of, thankfully, um, you need to hit a certain amount of views or you need to write this amount or like, you can't report on these because we've got a media deal with them or copious amounts of bullshit that can come along with with uh, publications right now, of which is a lot of it. Well, I mean, look, dude, I, I'll be obviously still keeping an eye on all of your work uh, while you're over at Hitmark. And as I said, it's a shame to see you go, but, you know, it sounds like you're going to be doing something that's going to revitalize you. And that's the key thing. Uh, you know, I, I think if you want to have longevity in this industry, it's almost like being in solitary confinement uh esports you have to find something that amuses yourself yes yeah. you have you have you know whether it's like i'm gonna do 50 press-ups in a row and then i can see if i can do 51 and then maybe i get up to 60 you have to find a way to keep your mind occupied or you'll go fucking stir crazy because nothing really makes sense on the surface of it so um you know it's good that you're doing that um i, I guess a, a place to kind of wrap it up is you know, if you still feel similarly jaded or feel like your work doesn't make the right kind of impact, I mean, sounds to me that you wouldn't have too many problems with the idea of moving on and leaving this all behind. As I say, it's so tied to my identity now. Like, even even the thought of it then when you said it, like, me, like, just leaving esports journalism as a whole, like, I, I it's not even a thought really right now. Like, um if, if I received an offer at the same time as Hitmarker reached out to me, where it was like, come work for this organization and be in a role there, I, I, I wouldn't have entertained it. Like, I still very much think my best work is yet to come by far. Like, I, I still think I've got a, a, a lot going on. Um, I am, it's strange. It's, I, I don't know if it's an, like an abusive relationship where I don't want to fucking leave, but it does my head in and it isn't very good for me. Uh, I think a lot of the time, like, like burnout's been real, uh, but that's on me. So I'm trying to take care of that. Uh, but I, as you say, like revitalization, like it, it'd be nice to get to the point where I wake up and I'm excited to work with the people I work <laughs> with. You know what I mean? Though, like, I know it's it sounds ridiculous, but like, I would love it to like be excited for a project instead of like, oh fucking hell, let's go look at these cunts. You know, like, so if if just shifting it a bit and freeing myself of like. Um, the certain kind of constraints around journalism at the moment allows me to like have a bit of a better time. I was going to almost, I almost said fun, but a bit of a better time looking into companies and doing the kind of work that I feel important and, and also kind of say shapes what I, what I need it to, then, then it's worth it for me. So uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll go to hit marker within three months. I'll think this is fucking awful. They'll agree. No, you still should be at a publication, Adam. And then at that point I'll have to figure it out. Uh, I would not go to Upcomer. I know that. Uh, but uh, outside of that, I don't know. But I, I don't feel ready to, to move on. Might not even be an option by the time you're looking to move yeah, on. Yeah, well, I mean, um, mm. yeah. I, 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 Well, they're still hiring. So, I mean, <laughs> they'll, they'll be hiring until the, the ship's literally underwater at that point, you know. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, to be fair, if anonymous, anonymous Twitter accounts can get hired by them, then why, how can't I should be able to. Yeah. But oh, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't want yeah, to, just want to be there. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So no, I don't. I don't think I'm. I, I don't. I'm not at peace with the prospect of moving on by any mm. means. And I don't. I don't see it as me leaving, like reporting and such. Though I know it is a weird position because I'm not a publication or on stu uh, Substack or something. I you know, it's a, it's a weird kind of hybrid role. Uh, so I need to make sure the boundaries are really defined. And and uh, I've always, uh, well, for the past month since this has been happening, really, I've been like trying to wrap my head around the best way to communicate it to people. Uh, I'm still not quite there, uh, but here we are. I'm speaking about it now anyway, so I don't have to worry about that too much. 
uh, I, I'm still going to operate with ethics, ethics and not be a con and not side with people randomly. Uh, and I still don't like companies that fuck people over. Uh, so it's the same shit, really. But just well, you'll, yeah, you'll have uh, plenty of through. material to work with, probably. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. So it is exciting, uh, though. I know it's going to be somewhat more of the same shit, to be fair. Just a, a different lick of paint on it, maybe some some of the time. Yeah. Well, that's the gig. Yes, um, exactly. Yeah. So I, I think when I put this out, brother, I think I'll frame it as kind of uh, it's a good kind of dip your toe in the water if you want to learn about how to be an esports. I get asked that a lot as well, mate. And it's just like, I mean, the first thing I always, I just say now is don't, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Move but, yourself you know, instead. And this is why just two jaded fucking quasi northerners fucking you know mm. chewing the fat but anyway look man uh it, it's been great to finally do it and do uh do a proper show with you and kind of pick your brains and talk to you uh wonderful conversation and obviously you'll have all your socials up here but everyone watching make sure you go follow uh this guy on twitter if you want to keep up with the business side of esports there are few people better than him active right now it's just by adam fitch but it'll be on screen if sam's done his job um and there you go so any any final thing you want to say before we uh, wrap it up um i i want to um share gratitude for everything you've done for the industry because people give you a lot of shit but without you it would be i don't even know so yeah i don't even want to think about where it would be so like I know you're probably pretty past that. I might tweet out, I am like, esports now. I mean, <laughs> as, as few as, as not many people I can think of who have that right, you know, um, where I wouldn't be like, you know what, eh, it's kind of right. Um, so no, just gratitude, um, not only for having me, but for, for everything you've done. I know you get a lot of shit, so I think it's just important that you also get, get your flowers as well. Um, and apart from that... Uh, no, I was going to call out someone there, but I'm not going to. I'm going to be kind. So just thank you very much for having me on, mate. I, no I appreciate worries. it. I Good, really man. Th- well, thank you so much. And there you go. That was Adam Fitch, uh, soon to be over at Hitmark, and make sure you follow his stuff. And that was another episode of the Richard Lewis Show. So uh, we're going to wrap it up there. As always, I don't know who the next guest will be, but uh, we are going to have uh, a lot more episodes in 2022 than we did in 2021. Uh, I'll talk a bit more about that uh, later. And, uh, yep, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.